Hi everyone, it's Beverly Cole, but you can call me Bev. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you the process and the materials that I used to make this mixed media piece. I'm going to make another piece, not this one, but use the same technique and the same materials. Let's get started. The very first thing I want you to notice is that I use just plain old Elmer's glue. This is a piece of black mulberry paper. It's quite large. And I'm gonna cut a piece off that is easier to work with, actually. Elmer's glue goes on the front. And then I'm gonna flip it over. The reason I'm using this plastic sheet underneath is because it has some paint on it. And if you look at the first picture that I showed you, um, it's got a background made from transferred paper paint and so I'm hoping that I will have the same um, thing happen this time. I'm pretty sure this is how I did the first one but you know you kind of forget after a while because I made this piece and didn't quite know what I was going to do with it at first. It ended up being this project. I just kind of bunched the edges up so that when it's dry I can peel it off easier and I put it aside overnight. I went on to pick up these pieces of Actually, it's paper towel that I used to clean some of the um, watercolor palettes that I use in my classes. I don't usually clean my watercolor palette, but for classes, you want them to be clean. So I had to go ahead and clean all of that beautiful color off of them. And it transferred to these paper towels, which I dried, peeled apart, and glued onto some scrap paper. I'm going to use some templates, and I'm also going to use some punches. These are circles, and circle was the shape that I decided to use. You could use any shape, but this is what I decided. And I have some punches also to use for the smaller shapes. My one inch one that uh, didn't work. It was, it was just wasn't cutting out the whole circle. So instead of being frustrated, I just put it aside and used up, used the other two that I had. They worked great. It really was fun uh, looking for the spots on the watercolor paper that were more interesting, more colorful. And then once in a while, I just tried to stick those little ones into corners that, you know, I didn't want to waste any of it. Here's some distressed oxides that I used. I didn't really use the oxide, uh, you know, feature of these. I just, you could have used any kind of ink, any ink pads, even chalks around the edges. This is just what I had. So I matched them to the colors that were on the paper towel I wanted them to stand out. I don't usually use bright colors. Uh, I like to use, you know, vintage kind of stuff. So this was different for me, but a lot of fun. It was almost uh, like something you would have done when you were a kid, you know? I kept it super simple, flowers and, a, and planets, I guess, or the sun. So, I mean, this method would even look cute with, you know, like a house with clouds and little stick figures, who knows? You know, it doesn't matter doesn't matter at all. What matters is that I'm having fun and I'm playing. I'm playing, trying something that I haven't done before. Just making some circles and deciding what I would use them for. That's how I made the first one. Of course, this one I know what I'm going to make, I think. Now I'm cutting out some larger ones to use for the flowers. And I'm gonna show you a way that you can use the templates to do this also. Even though my first one I freehand, then I decide maybe the template would work. I'm thinking, you know, for you guys, maybe a template would be easier. So I kind of cut off the top and then I looked over at my flowers that I already had, which I did freehand, and I just flattened the top more. And look at that, it's the same shape. So I went ahead and did it with the others. This is a smaller flower, I'm doing the same thing. Just use the pencil, a simple regular old pencil and a pair of scissors, that's all you need. Flatten the top, and then I go ahead and since it's the same size, I just use that one as a template. Perfect, perfect, yay. Then I'm making some stems and some leaves. So I looked for a piece that was more green and blue. That's not even necessary. I mean, just because the leaves in real life are green <laughs> doesn't mean they have to be green in your piece, right? It's your piece, make them any color you want. I cut some eighth of an inch 
thing pieces, I think, eighth of an inch wide for the stems. Doesn't really matter. I just thought, well, this is a, this is a good size for my stem. And these leaves, I'm cutting freehand. And then I did the same thing. I thought, well, if I can figure out a way you guys, you know, can make these easier. I went ahead and I used my corner rounder. I have two of them. And uh, I got my leaves started that way. You kind of get the basic shapes and then you can just take a pair of scissors and cut off any little tiny, yeah, little tiny points that are left. It worked great. That one even looks like a nail file. <laughs> but I work that I work on that one again later, just getting it into a better shape for the fl- for the uh, leaves. But they're very simple shapes, nothing special. But you could make them special, even more special. It depends on what you feel like doing. You know, I really was just playing. Carlene was here when I made the original. We were talking, and I just started punching out shapes and gluing them to the black background that I had already uh, already added the glue to. It was just laying around here for a while and I finally used it and it worked great. Now I'm planning out my little scene. I'm looking at my original and I'm trying to copy it, but I don't have to copy it. I can make it different. I can make it completely different if I want to. Here I'm still trying to do the same thing as the first one. So I keep looking over at my other shapes on my other piece and I'm trying to copy it. But you know, if you're anything like me, it's not really fun when you have to copy something and make it more than once. I like to make something new every time. I get bored if I have to do the same thing over and over again. But here it is looking pretty much the same. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have to put it on that black background and that's fine. Let's just, you know, make it look the same. I'm cutting out some of the planet shapes here. I love these lines. So I thought that's great for a planet, right? It's the lines across the planet. Thinking of the first design that I made and here I'm inking edges again, using the same colors. But one thing I also did on this one that I didn't do on the first one was I really used a lot of the green on the stems and the leaves right over the paper towel. I added color and it was fun. I didn't do that in the first one. So there's already one change. I mean, why make something exactly the same? Why not change it up? So here you can see me adding more of the green and it really did make a difference. I have the two original pieces here, the one I did second that you're looking at now and the one I did before. And the second one that I'm working on in this video, the leaves and stems are much more brilliant than in the first one. They look really happy. <laughs> I'm almost done with these and then yeah, see how I lay it down and I just rub the ink all over it to bring out the green. Okay, so here is how it looks. And now we're going to go back to our mulberry paper, which has stiffened overnight and I'm carefully removing it. And sure enough, I was concerned that the paint wouldn't transfer because I wasn't sure I did this exactly the same way, but it did, it transferred just perfectly. Can you see how it looked in the first one? Yeah, but of course it's not exactly the same. So I'm thinking, hmm, how am I gonna make this work? I decided that I would cut it in half because it was quite large and because it was so crisp, I was positive I could just tear it, you know? So I folded it back and forth a couple times. And then I tested to see if it would tear. And oh yeah, it did. But I was afraid that it would go crooked, so I got a straight edge and that worked just great. I mean, look at that, how fast. Then I decided, okay, let's try it. So we can fit all the flowers and wait a minute, they're gonna be super short and they're gonna crowd the sky. So we might have to change it up a bit and that's fine. But it was so small, I really wasn't happy with it. Everything was so crowded. I mean, where were they looking? Off the paper? Look where those planets are. They almost look like 
flowers without stems. And I was really unhappy. So I turned to my other sheet that I tore and I put it more vertical and I was happy that I had more sky space. Happy that they could look up at the, at the <laughs> I keep talking about them looking like they're alive, but they're so cute. Really fun, really fun to play with. Do you remember color forms? That's kind of what it reminded me of. The color forms have the black background and you would stick your little uh, plastic pieces to it. That's kind of what this looked like. Then I decided to get rid of the big flower and just make this kind of cutesy romantic picture with two flowers holding leaves instead of hands and looking up at the sky. One of them's looking up, the other one's looking kind of, you know, to the side like they're looking at the other flower, I guess. And then I decided, well, we need to make it a moon. That's got to be a moon. So I got rid of the big circle and just put that little crescent piece that I cut off one of the flower shapes earlier. I was happy. Then I brought it to my sewing machine. As I sewed, I had to kind of curl up the other part of the black mulberry paper, and I kind of got scared that it was going to rip, but it didn't. It didn't rip. And when you sew paper this slippery and thin you can turn it in all different directions even with a regular foot on the machine and regular thread regular bobbin I just used a straight stitch and I used a zigzag stitch some and the stitches were definitely wonky but it just added to the personality the whimsical fun personality of the piece you should really try this if you have a sewing machine and, you know, I, I sew, but I'm not really a seamstress. I can, you know, I make things, made things for my kids, doll clothes and dolls, outfits for them. But I'm not really a seamstress, so I didn't get stressed about what kind of a needle I was using or any of that. I just played. I just played with it. And it's like, as long as it's stitching, I'm happy. Here's the back. I'm cutting off the extra strings. I'll flip it over and show you how cute, how cute it is. I'm so happy with it. I really hope that you'll try this. And I would love to hear from you or maybe even see some of the things that you've made. Leave me a comment and don't forget to like this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.